All right. Well, hey, everybody. Grim Green, GrimGreen.com back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again. I got a vapey thing that I wanted to talk about today. This is an RDA. It comes from Vapefly. It's called the Wormhole RDA. And overall, I've been having, I don't know, a pretty good time with it. It's not a bad vape at all. It's got some really weird airflow going on. And aesthetically, I just can't stand the way that this atomizer looks. It just, it's just a tall, ugly atomizer that gives you a pretty good vape if you can get past all of the wacky ass airflow options on this. They have side airflow, they have bottom airflow, and the bottom airflow comes through the post. It's just real weird, honestly, with not a lot of added value. But in order to get to know this atomizer just a little bit better, what we're gonna do is go up close as we always do. That's right. Quick short up at closey time. Go. But first things first, it is 810 compatible on the top. So boom, throw a DHD nub tip in there. Yeah, no problems. Boom, throw this 810 drip tip in there. Yeah, no problems. You throw a District 5 in there. Yeah, boom, fits, no problems. Every 810 drip tip that I have actually fits in this just stellar, perfectly. So it's a two-piece top cap. This AFC is like a clear Delrin plastic material, and that's what you're going to be using for adjusting the AFC. It's all one piece. And then you have the barrel of the atomizer right here. And when we're looking at all this AFC, these holes right here are the single coil option and then these coals on this side and this side are the dual coil option. You have the option of running single coil with the bottom airflow, you have the option of running dual coils with the bottom airflow, and you have the option of running dual coils without the bottom airflow. Thankfully, you can run dual coils without that bottom airflow. And again, aesthetically, this is just real super ugly to me. I don't like the way that this is kind of uh, flat on one side, flat and round and flat and round, and it's just real busy and noisy, a lot going on, bunch of holes everywhere. It's not a very clean or sleek design in any way. This is very much function over form. And then this is the deck that's underneath. I got a little bit of moisture here because I just rinsed it off. These are just some fused Claptons that I installed. It's flathead screws on top, and these clamps raise up. When you unscrew these, your clamps will raise up. It's fairly easy to just put your leads in, screw these down. You need to, you know, move them around, pinch them and pull them, and get them all glowing evenly, but it's not a difficult install at all. Two O-rings hold the top cap on very securely, and you have a very, very difficult deep juice well. This is such a deep juice well that when you're using it in squonk mode, it's going to flood the base of this, and then you're kind of going to have to wait for it to wick up to your coils. It's very much, and I know I've said this a lot in the past, it's very much like just a small, small, small RDTA. But then if you keep rotating it, you're going to notice this huge hole on the side, and that kind of looks like a face. <laughs> and what this airflow does is it goes in, and then out the center. The coils are actually in the way, so I'm gonna take this screw out right now and you can kinda, it'll give you a better idea of how that middle airflow works. So there's this little sort of uh, clampy thing, right, that goes over the middle airflow and it comes with two of these. One is for single coil and one is for dual coil. And the dual coil has holes on both sides because the airflow is coming out through the middle right at your coils, which on paper actually probably seems like a pretty great idea, but in execution and the way that it affects the vape, it affects the vape honestly negatively, but we'll get there in a second. So I'm just going to put this back on for now. And before we start doing any sort of airflow adjustments, I'm just going to throw some wicks in here real fast. You just wick it very much like a traditional RDA. Cotton goes in, folds underneath, down into that juice well. You don't want to fill your juice well with cotton, so I trimmed mine just so that you can kind of, I mean, you can kind of even imagine it on the outside. The wicks go down and are just going to kind of touch, just rest on the base of that deck inside. And so now let's talk about the airflow. You got this big hole over here and then you have air, you, you know, you're going to need airflow pointing at your coils as well. So what you can do for a dual coil is you find this spot right here on the, on the AFC and you're going to line it up with that right there. You want the single coil holes facing your posts. So now you're getting bottom airflow. It's going to come in here and straight through the center post right 
right at your coils, and now you have side airflow here as well. It annoys me beyond repair that these are not centered over this. Every time I look at that, it just makes me crazy, man. But you're gonna put your little uh, white Delrin, clear Delrin on top. The AFC isn't really AFC-ish. You can open up any section of three at a time, and that's the that's kind of the limit of the AFC. But we got three open holes on that side, three open holes on that side, and then the airflow open on the bottom right here. But that's not the way that I like to run it. I like to run it with the bottom airflow off, and we'll get to why when we get up top. But I look for this little uh, swirly vape fly symbol, and I put that right over this hole. Cover up that bottom airflow. So now all the bottom airflows are covered up, and you only have this top airflow and this top airflow. So I'm just gonna leave it right there. I'm gonna reattach my drip tip and we're ready to go. All we need is juice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to juice this up real fast. We're going to get back out to normal view. We're going to talk about how it vapes. But it vapes really great when you have that bottom airflow turned off. The only way, the only way that I want to run this atomizer is with the side airflow open and the bottom airflow off. When you have both going, when you have the side airflow full open and you have that bottom airflow full open, all it does, it, it's like a switch. It's like a switch to turn off your flavor. The side airflow is smooth. It, it's swooshy. It feels nice and even and soft and just delivers a, a real nice vape, honestly. Great, great. In fact, the flavor is even pretty damn good. Just with that side airflow, this is this is a normal view. It's a juice I've been vaping, I mean, literally for years. I know exactly what it's supposed to taste like, and it tastes great in this RDA, assuming you don't use that weird, weird bottom airflow. If you pick the three holes that are facing right at your coils, it's a very nice, I mean, not. I don't wanna say restricted, because I don't want people to get the wrong idea, but it's slightly slightly restricted. You can feel, you know, a little bit of resistance when you're dragging on it. It's not just like breathing through a straw. And when you turn on that bottom airflow, man, I swear to God, it's like a switch. It's like, oh, I wanted to turn off my flavor. It makes it much, much more airy, very much more like a cloud chasey type of atomizer. And if you're just after clouds and you don't care about flavor, this will give you lots and lots of clouds with very little flavor. So overall, what do I think of this wormhole RDA? Eh, I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. With the top airflow, gives me a, a real nice vape. The deck itself, real easy to build on. Turn off that bottom airflow and you'll get some pretty nice flavor. I do also want to say that I think this atomizer is much better suited to be a dripper than it is to be a squonker. The way that the deck is and the depth of that juice well really kind of lends itself to being a dripper more. I think than a squonker, you can bleh your juice right through the middle with confidence on this and you know it's going to get all over your coils and all over your cotton. When you have it as a squonker, it's just a hollow pin, you know, through the bottom and it's going to flood the very bottom of this chamber with juice. There's not a chance in hell that you're going to be able to squonk this and actually get juice directly onto your coils. You're going to be able to squonk this and then you're going to have to kind of pause and, and give it a minute for the juice to wick up the cotton to your coils. So are you going to need your vape budget hands for the vape fly wormhole RDA? Uh, not really, not at all. Clicking around the internet, I found it anywhere from 20 to $25. And I know I say this a lot, but that price is definitely in that category of it's cheap enough to buy it, maybe just to try it out. So if we're going to play the Aliens game, let's play the Aliens game or the FDA game, pardon me. The FDA or the Aliens come and they take everything I have and I have nothing left to vape with. Is the wormhole something I would seek out and buy? Eh, nah, probably not. I, I don't I don't care. I, I wouldn't buy this. It's giving me a fine vape, but it's real ugly. Aesthetically, I just don't want to look at this thing on top of a mod. They really use that bottom airflow, bottom airflow, side airflow, multi-direction. 
directional airflow is like a real selling point for this RDA, but honestly, I don't see it as any value added at all whatsoever. It's literally like a dial you use to turn down your flavor and that just that just annoys me. When I don't see value added, that's something that heavily annoys me. That's where I'm going to leave that. I'm going to throw some links down in the description to where you can check out the wormhole if you are so interested. But yeah, that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, let's keep on vaping.